The defense would like to call its first witness. Right there. He's such a non-lawyer, he doesn't even know the prosecution goes first. And you obviously don't know Jarvis v. The State of New York, 1937, when calling of the first witness is of such special nature as to disrupt the flow of the trial once it started. What the hell special nature are you talking about? When the defense wants to call the prosecutor as its first witness. Harvey, unless you have something to overturn this, I'm going to need you to have a seat. Mr. Spector, you said there's no record of me ever having an apartment in Boston. Can you explain to the jury why there's no record of you ever having lived there? I'm not the one on trial here. No, you're not. You're the one in that chair, so why don't you answer the question or we can stop this whole thing right now. There's no record of me living there because I sublet up there when I have my place down here. So it is possible that a person not have a Boston address without it meaning that they didn't attend Harvard. Great. Thank you so much. This witness is excused. What exactly is your reason for not having an address up there? Unless you're too afraid to answer my questions. No, I'm not afraid of you at all. My reason is that I chose to live with my friend Trevor during that time. The only problem with that is your friend Trevor has lived in Brooklyn his entire life. Exactly, a three hour and 20 minute drive from Harvard. So you say you made that drive every day? No, I only went up for tests because that's all I had to do. I guess you needed some extra tutoring, huh? You expect these people to believe that you graduated from the most competitive law school in the world without ever going to class? See, that's funny because you actually expect these people to believe that I never went to law school at all and yet still somehow managed to convince the smartest lawyers in the world to make me their youngest partner ever. Whose story is looking more far-fetched now? Oh, no answer? Great. No more questions, Your Honor. I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but he's kicking your ass. And I'm about to kick back. Are you two discussing something that defense should be made aware of? Just talking about the Knicks. Now, is the prosecution ready to call their first witness? The prosecution's first witness is this affidavit from every single member of the defendant's supposed graduating class. Objection, Your Honor. I haven't seen that. Well, then let me read it to you. We collectively come forward to swear the following regarding Michael James Ross. We never saw him. We never knew him. We never heard of him. And it makes us sick that he's taking the good name of Harvard Law School and throwing it down the toilet. Please find him guilty on all counts. Your Honor, I move to strike that document right now. On what grounds? On the grounds that it's completely fabricated. Where's your proof? Besides the fact that I actually went to Harvard, there's no way you could have contacted all of those people since last night. Then I suggest you call every one of these people and put them on the stand. But when you do, every single one of them is gonna look you in the eye and say, who the hell are you? What? No snappy comeback? You can try to trick these people all you want, but the fact is, you didn't go to Harvard, and this proves it. Objection, he's testifying. What I'm doing is winning. All right, that's enough. I think this is a good time to take a break. It's done? Yes. It won't hold up forever, but it will hold up for now. Thank you. Benjamin, I I didn't expect it for a couple of hours. I, I haven't had a chance to get you any bacon. Well, that's quite all right, Michael. This one is on the house. You know, you never asked if what they're saying about me is true. I didn't need to. I knew it was true the second I heard it. I don't understand. All these kids who went to Harvard, they never gave me the time of day. All they cared about was letting me know where they went to school and I didn't. You've never done that to me. Not one time. I, I, I don't know what to say. Say that when you're done and you've beaten this thing, you won't start acting like some asshole who went to Harvard. I mean, can't really promise you that, Benjamin. I'll have gone to Harvard. That's not funny, Michael. Is the prosecution ready to call its next witness? Prosecution calls Rachel Zane. Objection. Your Honor, the witness cannot object to testifying simply because she intends to take the fifth. The witness doesn't have to testify because she's my wife. What? I have a marriage certificate here from the state of Nevada showing that the witness and I were married in Las Vegas six weeks after we started dating. Both of you up here now. Where the hell did you get that? What do you mean? 
You didn't marry her and you know it. Well, why do I have everything I need proving I did? Because you did some bullshit to get out of this. Oh, look who's crying about it now. Keep your voices down. You think this is a joke? You try this in court, Gibbs is gonna prove you're not married, and Rachel's gonna go to jail for perjury. He's right. You better know what the hell you're doing. Who said that I was gonna use this in the real trial? I get it. This is a fake, just like you. I said keep your goddamn voice This down. is as real as that affidavit was, okay? Now, you wanted to rattle me, I've rattled you. What are you gonna do about it? Prosecution calls Rachel's answer to the stand. Objection, we just went over this. When spousal privilege is invoked in the moment, Prosecution has the right to challenge the validity of the marriage. This is ridiculous. Objection overruled. Ms. Zane, take the stand. We can skip swearing her in since she's just going to lie about it anyway. Objection. Ms. Zane, if you got married six weeks after dating the defendant, why are you engaged to him right now? Because we did it on a whim. And we'd planned to have an annulment, but once we fell more in love, we thought that it might be wonderful to reveal it to our families after we were married again. And how exactly did it go when you got married the first time? We were in Las Vegas. Yeah, yeah, I don't give a shit where you were. What color was your dress? What color was the cake? Objection. Who was there? Were there any witnesses? Your Honor, he's Who badgering were the her. Come on. And what Your goddamn Honor, get time him off was of her. it? Harvey, Tell me right let now. Let the witness answer. The dress was white, and the cake was vanilla with a buttercream frosting. It was a small ceremony at around 10 p.m. And I remember the man who married us like it was yesterday because it was the most special day of my life. And when you came up with this story, did Mr. Ross at least give you the courtesy of letting you make up your own memories of your supposedly sacred day? Objection! Since if he represents himself at trial, you won't have a real wedding for at least two to five years. Harvey. And I've got one more question. Did you vow to remain faithful to Mr. Ross throughout your marriage. Yes, I did. Yeah, then I guess when you cheated on him with Logan Sanders, it means you lied to him at that non-existent ceremony just like you're lying to all of us right now. That's enough. If you want to bring more outside information to dispute this marriage, feel free, but for right now, this witness is excused.